Ryan, Coach Madison, uh, got a little emotional talking about the defense after Saturday. And can you just uh, kind of take a look back? And is this defense at this point more than maybe could have been reasonably expected at this point? Um, I think we've exceeded a lot of people's expectations defensively. I think that people probably counted us down and out as a defense uh, after the performance we gave up uh, previous years and stuff like that. So, but we've been motivated and we've been focused the whole time on being a defense that uh, has traditionally been seen at Michigan and a defense that, uh, you know, alums and stuff would recognize. And I think that Coach Madison kind of just got emotional because he's starting to see a defense like when he used to coach here, you know, a defense that was feared and uh, a defense that was respected throughout the league. And that's something we've been striving for and we're making progress towards it. Uh, I still think there's a little bit more work to be done, but the good thing is we're still, you know, on the up. <clears throat> was Coach Madison also emotional with you guys after that game? And what was that like if he was? Um, I wouldn't say he was emotional. Uh, you know, he probably was just a little bit more praising than normal. He's kind of <laughs> kind of a hard-nosed kind of guy. But, um, you know, he was, you could definitely tell that he uh, was very proud of what we had done as a defense. Um, but at the same time, we're not going to get complacent and say, you know, we just played our best game. Uh, we have two more games to play, uh, two more opportunities to get better and give a more dominant performance than what we did last Saturday. So that's what we're focused on. We're focused on Nebraska and the challenges that they present and uh, trying to put together a better performance than we had. When you, you know, after the game, when you look at the box score and see 37 rushing yards, you know, how much pride do you take in that as a defensive lineman? I take uh, tremendous pride in that and also just uh, – Love playing with the guys <clears throat> up front that I play with. You know, Mike, Craig, Heinegger. Um, I love those guys. I, I've, I've been with them for so long, and we've been through so many struggles defensively, especially when it comes to rushing the ball. And uh, when we can make that kind of statement and say, you know, you're not going to run the ball, you have to be one dimensional, um, that's huge. And that's something that we haven't been able to do, even though we've wanted to. Uh, and it's been a long time coming, I feel like. But, you know, we're finally. Uh, making statements that, you know, the ball won't be run against Michigan. And it's because of uh, what the front seven have been doing. The linebackers did a great job as well. I think uh, JT Floyd heard any criticism after the Iowa game and whether or not that motivated him against Jenkins on Saturday. I've, I've said all along JT is a tremendous competitor. Um, whether or not he heard some of the criticisms that uh, were directed towards him uh, after the Iowa game, I don't know. But um, you definitely could tell that he had a different level of focus and intensity out there. And uh, he played pretty well. And that's what we need him to do uh, for our defense to be successful. We need our coverage to be great. And that allows us to get after quarterbacks. Ryan, you guys have won more than you have lately, obviously. But something tells me you guys have bigger plans to make this more of a special season by closing strong. Yeah. Um, eight wins is eight wins. I'm not, <clears throat> I don't think anybody's wowed by that in our program. Uh, Michigan has won way more than eight games uh, on average, I would say. Uh, so just because as of late, we haven't, of recent years, we haven't uh, reached that mark doesn't mean that anybody, I think, on the team, I hope everybody on the team still focused on, yeah, we have the potential to win 11 games. You know, there's, there's no reason to be satisfied with what we've done so far. If we sit on what we've done so far, uh, our legacy won't be anything special. But if you win 10 games at Michigan, when you know your bowl game you're going to be remembered for a long time even after the shutout against minnesota uh you came up here and said there's still things you need to work on and it wasn't a perfect game do you feel do you guys as a defense feel pleased with saturday or are you still looking at certain things and saying we got to get better oh yeah absolutely i mean when you give up 14 points obviously you did something wrong and um <clears throat> You know, as far as playing a perfect game defensively, I don't think that's ever going to happen um, for any team. But the challenge is to get as close to perfect as you can. And, you know, we had some good things going for us, uh, especially in the first half. But we were undisciplined in the zone read twice. That got us beat. And uh, we also gave up a fourth and 26. We ran the wrong stunt up front. And uh, those kind of things might cost you a championship down the road. So it's something that you have to fix. But the good thing is, uh, the mistakes that need to be fixed are, you know, 
definitely getting smaller. There's not as many mistakes made, so um, we're getting really, really close to being a really, really great defense, and that's exciting. You talk about the uh, added challenge that you'll face this week with a quarterback that can run and the option looks that you'll see. Uh, Nebraska <clears throat> presents a challenge unlike any other team in the Big Ten, I think. Uh, the only other team that might present a challenge like them would be us, I would feel like, as far as they get in the sh shotgun pistol and they run the ball and they have two really big threats to run the ball. Um, you have to protect against both, Martinez and Burkhead. Both can ro run the ball very well. Um, Martinez does a great job with his reads. And uh, we have to be very disciplined when we go up against this team. That's what they're going to do. They're going to test your discipline. They're going to test you know, how, who's going to run to the ball and make plays, because these guys will make you miss. And um, it's going to be a defensive uh, game. This game is what I feel like, because we match up statistically very well. And whichever defense shows up to play, is, I think is going to walk away with the win. So. Uh, we have to really focus and buckle down and uh, make up in our minds what we want to do and what kind of statement we want to make defensively. Ryan, do you feel individually your game has reached new levels in the past month or you know, whenever? And if so, when did that happen? How did it happen? Why did it happen? Um, you know, I don't want to take too much personal credit for uh, the games, of my performance. I think that. Coaches gave me some freedom this game to call some stunts up front that normally coaches wouldn't do, but they trust that I'm smart enough to make the right calls. And uh, if you watch the game film, we were twisting all over the place, different places they didn't know where we were coming from. And that was the coaches allowing me to call those games. And uh, my teammates ran them perfectly. Uh, and I was just one of the ones that came free. It could have been anybody else. Uh, credit goes to Mike Martin, too. He drew, he drew a lot of blocks for me and left me with a one-on-one. -on -one and we talked before, if Mike gets a one-on-one, -on -one, he'll win it. If I get a one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to win it. Um, it's just the way things shook out. But uh, you know, lots of credit goes to my teammates. Craig Rowe ran the games with me as well, and he did a tremendous job attracting attention. So uh, all I did was make the plays that came to me, and uh, the rest of the guys did a tremendous job. You know, you've been around the program. You've played in the Big Ten for quite a while now. Is it still a little bizarre to think like Nebraska is in your conference, in your division? Yeah, it is a little bit. Um, I guess it's something that I hadn't really thought about until it was time to play Nebraska. Uh, just, you know, you see them on the schedule, but you don't t think too much about it. But um, it's different. It's different to have them in the conference. Uh, I think it's good to have them in the conference. They're a very competitive team. Uh, I think they, you know, play well into the Big Ten. And uh, I just think that uh, Nebraska is going to add a whole new element to, you know, how the Big Ten is going to shake out as it continues because they're going to be a powerhouse in the Big Ten just like they had been in the uh, Big 12. Ryan, what's, what's it like to know that if you win Saturday, you help Michigan State of all teams uh, win the division? Yeah, I mean, that's something that we're not trying to focus on. Um, what they do uh, is what they do. What we do is what we do. We're focused on us. The, the fact that Michigan State's ahead of us is unfortunate, but it has nothing to do with what we can control. We can control what we do Saturday uh, and in these next two games and let the cards fall where they may, but uh, we're going to play our best games and prepare our best and uh, do our best to win uh, the next two games. Ryan, with the stunts that you were calling on the line, is that something that may continue or is that something that you saw that the coaches were just going to let you do against Illinois? Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> we haven't talked too much about it. Um, I think that it's something that they'll probably think to do a little more often. They've been <clears throat> talking about it for a little while, and uh, they just kind of, we actually didn't get the green light. I, we just kind of started doing it. And, <laughs> you know, was just take a risk. Why, why not? And it worked for the for first two or three times. And coach was like, you know what, just call them when you feel like calling them. I was like, all right. So, um, you know, it's hopefully we'll get a chance to run some more games and stuff. but. Uh, the big thing is just getting pressure with four men, regardless of if you're running uh, stunts or anything like that. Four man pressure and you get to drop seven in coverage, especially when there were times where Illinois had only three guys in route. So when you can do that, you can get that kind of pressure, that does nothing but help your defense. So that's what we're focused on up front is making sure that we can somehow apply pressure with four men and keep the quarterbacks contained, especially athletic ones like the ones we're about to see, and uh, allowing our coverage guys to get their jobs done and make it easier for them.
Brian, at one point Illinois pulled Shieldhouse just to try to switch things up. I mean, how, as a defense, how much do you notice that, and how much does it fire you guys up? Uh, we were barking at the freshman when they brought him in because we was just we could tell he was kind of wide eyed. Um, we kind of think to ourselves, as far as my uh, personal opinion, but when he comes in, kind of think if we can get this kid out, you know, they're gonna what are they gonna do? They're, they they got nothing left. So all of a sudden you kind of turn up that intensity meter, especially when they bring in another quarterback because you just want to say, you know, if we take this guy out or we you know we get into his head or something like that. Where's this offense going to go? Because if you take, cut a, take a quarterback out of a game, you got no offense. So uh, we were excited about it. And uh, credit Shieldhouse for coming back and playing the way he did. He played uh, you know, with a lot of courage because I think he was, he was hurt, I think. I'm not sure. But um, he's, a, he's a really tough dude. Uh, give him a lot of credit for coming back and playing the way he did. Considering where the defensive line was early in the year, uh, <coughs> Coach Madison, Coach Hope, I had to kind of call you guys out to get pressure on the quarterback. How far have you guys come, and what are Ho uh, Coach Hoke and Coach Madison saying you guys now um, as a D-line? I think we're, we're progressively getting to where we want to be. Our standard is so high for our defensive line and what we want to do and what we want to accomplish. We think our starting four is better than any starting four in the country. Um, that's our opinion. Uh, you don't have to believe it if you don't want to, but that's what we think. And we expect ourselves to play that way. We haven't always played that way, and there's other defensive lines that have put together better games than us. But as far as we're considered, we, we, as far as we are concerned, that's what we think we are, and we have to play like. And when we play that well, <clears throat> the defense plays well because the runs aren't coming through the, to get in the second level. Uh, the passers are rushed. And as far as uh, Coach Hoke and Coach Madison, they haven't said too much. And when they're not yelling at you, that's, that's – all the praise you need. Just silence sometimes is good. <laughs> right. You uh, obviously um, you're saying that we that maybe this defense has, has uh, exceeded expectations, but not doesn't sound like your expectations. What did you know that we didn't know coming off a of, you know defensive performance last season when, when you were 110th to now whatever it is? And did you know it because of the coaching change? I mean, is that what gave you more confidence? Um. You know, I know things that you guys don't know just because I'm around the guys so much. And all the fans and stuff see is what we put out on the field Saturdays. They don't understand the amount of preparation and stuff that goes into it. Um, and they don't know what we did in the off season to become better as a defense. We, we put so much work into what we have done as a defense uh, in the off season, more so than I would bet anybody else in the country. We brought guys uh, in every day. The seniors did, no coaches. And uh, it was all voluntary. People just showed up. And you know they worked. We worked for an hour, hour and a half every day on different things. DBs would work on coverages relating to different receivers and different route combinations. D line, oop, D line would work on hands and stuff. Uh, linebackers would work on reads with their uh, run pass boot and stuff like that. And all the positions came together and made sure that that's what we did over the summer every day because we wanted to be good. And all you see on Saturday is that paying off. That's why my expectations were so high because. I'm a firm believer that uh, hard work is going to uh, make you successful in whatever you want to do. And everybody on this defense, uh, from freshmen to seniors, guys who played to guys who are in reserve roles, everybody has stepped up their amount of preparation and the work that they put in. And that's what you see on Saturdays is a defense that worked hard, and that's why they're successful. So that was all organized by the seniors? Absolutely, yeah. The seniors uh, took charge. and. Credit the underclassmen for following. None of them had to show up, but they chose to because they wanted to be good, and uh, that's what put us in the position we're in right now.